Hi everyone, I'm Anna Donnell and I've been a member of St. John's for 10 years. So today I'm going to tell you a little bit about how I ended up at St. John's and how my relationship with the church has changed over those 10 years. So in 2010, I moved to Cincinnati to attend UC for grad school and I had not got an apartment in Clifton and I knew I wanted to attend a UU church. So of course I just Googled it and St. John's popped up in Clifton. So of course I was like, well, that's kind of nice walking distance. So I decided to attend. And the first time that I went, um, it was a kind of a summer service and it um, had a lot of music. And I remember I sat next to Ethel who was so sweet and really kind of welcomed me into the church. And it was just a really great experience. So the first few years of being at St. John's, I was really heavily involved. So I became a YRUU leader and worked with the high school students. I was a coming of age mentor. Um, I became a greeter. Uh, I did a whole host of other things. Um, I also wanted to attract more like young adults to the church. Uh, so at that time, you know, I was in my early 20s and there weren't too many people that were in that age group that were attending like Sunday service. So we started the Young Adult Lunch, which eventually became um, Young Adult Cookies and Conversation, which is still happening today, which is pretty cool. So uh, after a few years, I got a full-time job, and then I also got closer to finishing my dissertation. And I knew that things had to shift, and it was going to be like a new season of my life, and I really had to focus on working full-time and finishing my degree. So it was really hard to come to people at St. John's and say, I'm sorry, but I can't commit to this thing this year. Um, I went from being a greeter, you know, twice a month or more to only being able to greet like once a month. Um, so even though that was a hard decision, the people at St. John's were really understanding and really supportive of me finishing my degree. A few years after that, I had another major life shift. So I became pregnant and my daughter was born. And so that really actually sparked a really new way to engage with the people at St. John's. So for the past year and a half, I've become a lot more involved with parents and families at St. John's. And we've tried some new um, programming, especially for like little kids um, that might not quite be at the stage to be an RE yet. So that's been really nice. Um, one thing that I didn't really anticipate was uh, a little while ago, our daughter's nap shifted to be smack dab in the middle of service. So at first I was really disappointed about this because I thought, oh, okay, now she's not gonna be able to see her friends at service, we're not gonna be able to play with them and everything like that. But then I realized um, the first time that I went alone, so she stayed at home with my partner and she was napping, and I went to St. John's alone, it was really that I needed to be at St. John's. And it was really nice, <laughs> for those of you who are parents who may relate to this, it was really nice to just have a couple of hours to myself where I could be at service. I started picking up embroidery again so I could listen to music and just listen to the message and embroider. Just being able to reconnect with people at St. John's again. And so I've really, really enjoyed that. Even though I'm not able to go to St. John's every week, um, and now especially that everyone is at home right now, um, you know, we're not always able to tune in and watch the videos on Sunday, um, but I think that it's important to think about and reflect on how your relationship with your faith and how your relationship with the church may evolve over time based on the season that you're in. And it's not that you have to be all gung-ho all the time, but that can kind of ebb and flow sometimes, and I think that's totally okay. So I think one of the big takeaways that I have from how I've engaged with people at St. John's is that people don't care if you do everything or you know are totally over the top or super, super involved in like every single thing. I think people would actually discourage you from doing that because then you're not necessarily taking care of yourself. I think one of the greatest things about St. John's is that people always say, give as you are able. And that can mean a whole host of things. 
That can mean giving your time, giving your energy, giving your ideas, giving your feedback, giving financially, giving, you know, craft supplies, giving, um, you know, your gifts as teachers or your gifts, um, you know, for a first hour, like crafting or storytelling or whatever that is, or sharing your interests. And that's one thing that I really value about St. John's and one thing that I really love about the community. So I know right now that we're all getting ready for the pledge campaign and really recognizing that this year is a lot different than any, probably almost any other year in St. John's history. So I want you to kind of think about that phrase, so give as you are able. So if this year it's a little bit different, that's totally fine. Um, knowing that that might be a little bit different in that you feel like you can give a little bit more, you might also feel like this year you really can't give a little bit more, and that's totally fine. It's really thinking about giving what you are able and then thinking about what other gifts you may be able to send to the church. So with that, um, I hope you all are well, and I can't wait to see you all back at the actual St. John's in Clifton.